I just want to do this clip to clarify some things and explain some things which you are probably curious about. So I've done the bit about the physical aspects, you know, having a dedicated space, um, having the altar, and you may be wondering where does this come into it? Well, it is about ritual. Now, you look at um, the Catholic Church, they have the candles, they have the incense, they have the altar. And you'll find similar things in Judaism and Satanism. Indeed, any religion or creed which sees itself trying to get in tune with the occult world to an extent will have to make ritual. It is a show of dedication and it is, it is a show of discipline. Now you can argue these days that Judaism, Satanism and probably Catholicism to an extent of, in fact probably a very large extent, it is just, I don't know, a symbolic gesture, you know, it's just doing stuff for the sake of doing things. It is about tradition rather than application of the occult or esoteric knowledge. Unfortunately, you know, it is true. But when I said that you should pray to God facing east, is it symbolic? Yes, it is, but it's also practical because God can be anywhere he wants, anytime. In fact, you know, I believe in panentheism. I believe this physical world, the entire universe, is contained within God, but we have autonomy. So... Well, we don't have 360 degree sight. We cannot face all 360 degrees at any one time. So facing east is symbolic because the sun rises from the east, which is where the day begins. And you could say, which we live, so to speak. But, when we pray facing east, we are symbolically facing God as a contact point. Now, in Satanism, you, f you face the west. Is this just symbolism? Yes, it is. Because, one, by turning from east to west, you are symbolically turning your back on God. And two, when you are facing west and praying to demons or whatever demon you've chosen to do something for you, you have to realise that the demons are facing east. So in what you call black magic or demonic magic, what you have done is place a demon as your agent, so to speak. You 
asked the demon for something, the demon who is facing east then brings that to God. That That's all it is. You know, some people, they feel okay asking demons for things that are not actually necessary. Look, if you're in a bad situation and the estimation is that 90% of the people who take to worshipping demons, worshipping the Satan or Hush Satan, do so because they are desperate. There is no rule, so you know, you're asking God for money. There's no rule preventing that. It depends what you want the money for. That will actually decide whether God approves or doesn't. If you, you know, pray to God, say you want to fuck the neighbor's wife. No, that's not going to happen. But people will ask demons for these things. And even then, you know, you can say to the demon, you want to fuck the neighbor's wife. He can try and polish it up to present it to God. Because God does allow the secondary causes to act. Because remember, God is the primary cause. And his secondary causes, that includes demons and it includes us. So, you know, there is, I know people will say the Bible says we can't do magic, blah, blah. But magic really is just correct and devotional prayer to ask God for something. When you start asking the likes of demons, it's no longer uh, magic, it is sorcery. You know, asking for things that are just not proper. So, that's where the direction comes into it. Now, as for... Let's so say you got your altar, you got your candles, you got your incense. And you might be wondering, well, is this really necessary? What's the reasoning behind it? What you should understand is that this world, and there are four worlds, and this is why I say you should check out what I've done on the Kabbalah on my YouTube channel, of course. You've got four worlds. Absolute, the world of emanation. Bria, the world of creation. Yetzirah, the world of formation. And Asia, the world of action or the physical world as we understand it. What is the difference between these four worlds? Levels of vibration. And, you know, when you look at the various material things in this world, what is the difference? If all physical stuff is the same, then there would be no definition between one object and another. It is the rate of vibration. And it applies to colour as well. Different rates of vibration decide the pigments as we can perceive them. So, because if everything was just one physical colour, that would be it. There would be one physical colour. Whatever colour that is, that's everything. There would be 
it would be basically impossible even if objects were uh, different shapes, different sizes, whatever. We, we wouldn't be able to tell the difference. It is the rate of vibration that decides these things. So when do you like candles on an altar, regardless of the colour, your eyes will be seeing that colour be oh no, illuminated, so to speak, by lighting a candle. And incense, you light the incense, you get the smell, the incense. And I'll try to put it this way. Uh, you have various, um, let's say, right, you can get like, type of music there's some people call it binaural beats you know people put headphones on they listen to this trance type music and they go through different I don't know stages like alpha waves beta waves gamma waves in the brain and it brings on different states of meditation. What is the difference? It is the rate of vibration which there is here. It's like um, our ears hear these vibrations and it's transmitted to the brain. Where we process it. Same as with lighting candles, we take in the colour that is illuminated for our eyes, which don't. Put this way, our ears and our, our five senses take in vibrations as data which is processed in our brains and it goes from there. So this is why we use these things because the spiritual world and the physical world which are both present on this earth in this world need something to bind them together, a key. Um, if you've got, let's say, a wall, you've just put up a wall and you want to paint it, you can, you know, just get a basic paint, paint it on and hope for the best. Though usually that paint will not be able to cover it. Um, that wall completely there will be patchy it will come across as being somewhat see through but if we use a primer before putting on a final coat that makes a difference so the physical symbolic Uh, tools we use they are the primer between us and the spiritual world you know like I said the only difference between us and demons is we have bodies and they do not doesn't mean they don't exist but they don't exist as we can physically perceive them, but they do exist. Some ways you don't see radiation. Um, 
if you look at bodies, you know, human bodies, you know, a decent shock wave will knock people down, even though physically you cannot touch it. So this is, you know, what I've have tried to explain is that there has to be a key, a primer between the, the two worlds which do simultaneously exist on this earth, in this world. Anyway, that's probably a, it's kind of difficult trying to explain it, but that's what I just wanted to say in this clip. So, next we'll be dealing with the actual systems we can use in order to practice magic, that being the Kabbalah, the Shemha Mefarash, and the Goetia. So.